Welcome to Sakshi TV Special Immigration Talk Show with Attorney Chand Parathini from SPVLawFirm.com. Please note that uh, the information provided on the show is not legal advice and for general information purposes only. Sakshi TV or its agents will not be responsible for the use of information. Sakshi TV now has four immigration shows every week on Tuesdays with Lawyer Kaveti. On Wednesdays with Prashanti Reddy in English, on Thursdays with Chan Tarvatini, and on Fridays with Panu Nidra. Please tune in to ask your questions. If you are an immigration attorney and would like to join our special shows, please email us at usa at sakshi.com or call us at 8667257441. Mr. Chan needs no introduction, but if you need consultation, you can definitely log on to their firm, svblawfirm.com site for contact information. They have put a wealth of free information and online tools in the hands of immigration community, for which you do not have to be an uh, which you do not have to be a lawyer to understand. So, without any further delay, let's welcome Mr. Parvathneni on our show. Mr. Parvathneni, welcome back. I hope you're doing well. Hello, Shivani, and uh, hello everybody watching Sakshi TV today. Uh, welcome and. Uh... Uh, thank you for inviting me and uh, hopefully we will use this opportunity today to discuss a couple of updates on uh, employment-based immigration in USA and uh, answer any questions you have. Yes. Uh, before we get on to today's topic, Mr. Parvatneni, are there any latest immigration updates? Sure. So the July visa bulletin just got released. Uh, so it just got uh, released and uh, the data is not very promising, but... Uh, uh, just to give an idea on what is happening, uh, the EB1 dates and the EB2 dates, the dates have not moved at all. They are not uh, progressing at all. That is kind of expected. We're almost uh, getting closer to the end of the fiscal year. The fiscal year ends in September. So September 30th is when the fiscal year ends. And right now, the, the bulletin doesn't look promising going into the next couple of months. Uh, the good thing is at least EB1 and EB2, we did not see any retrogression. The dates are staying where they are, but unfortunately, the EB3, the EB3 dates have gone behind, gone back. They've almost gone back three years, and uh, the dates went back to January 2009. It was uh, a little bit of a shock. We did know that dates would retrogress, but not as bad, not till uh, 2009. And again, what this means is there is a lot of demand for EB3 and pretty much all the numbers for EB3 this year would get used up, which means USCIS does not have a lot of leeway to issue green cards in EB3 category, which is why they're retrogressing it back to 2009. And uh, more than likely, you will not see any further movement, at least until October bulletin. And again, starting with October bulletin, we can start seeing some progress. So that's on the, the green card side. And apart from the green cards, coming back to the H-1Bs. So June 30th, June 30th is the deadline for H-1Bs. And uh, currently the filings are going on. That being said, this year, USCIS has come out with an announcement. They came out with an announcement that they do suspect a lot of fraud uh, related to multiple registrations. And ever since that news came out, uh, I, I think... Uh, People are being cautious. And I think it's a good thing that USCIS came out with that notification because it gave everybody an opportunity to look at what has happened and look at uh, their data. And we are asking the companies if they suspect any kind of collusion, either direct or indirect, we are recommending not to file those cases. And uh, it does look like the filing volume has come down. Uh, and I, I think it is probably because of that notification from USCIS as well as uh, a lot of layoffs happening in the tech sector. So these probably cont are contributing to the slowness in the filings. And uh, compared to the last couple of years, definitely we are seeing a decrease in volume. And what that could potentially mean is we might see a second lottery if that's, that continues. However, uh, June 30th is the deadline and there is still time to do the filings. And uh, we will have more data in July as regards to the cap filings. Yes. <clears throat> so, you, um, Mr. Parvatini, usually what happens is uh, by the June 30th, uh, usually it's basically considered as the deadline for the first time H-1B uh, cases which are selected in the lottery. You know, it's, it's it basically considered as a deadline for the filing. Uh, and also, we're also hearing news that not many people who are selected in the lottery are being filed by the employers. Is it 
only because of the fact that there were multiple registration happening in the past or uh, are you seeing something else this year so this year i think uh, definitely compared to the last couple of years uh, we are seeing a lot of tech layoffs so that is definitely one factor and the other factor is definitely the multiple registrations and uh, the multiple registrations definitely did happen in uh, march and uh, not all multiple registrations are invalid however one cannot collude in the lottery collude with other people to increase their chances in the lottery so any time the same employee gets filed by multiple companies as long as the companies are completely independent both the job of the multiple job offers are completely independent and bona fide there is no issue however what has happened is multiple people multiple companies they have colluded what do you mean by collusion collusion basically is there, there is no real job so these multiple companies they are doing a filing and uh, more than likely they have an understanding that no matter where it gets picked up from one of them is going to file so clearly not all the companies have a bona fide offer it is only one offer that multiple companies are trying to do a registration because they want to increase the chances in the lottery so that is basically collusion and that kind of collusion is not permitted and uscis's announcement was that they do suspect a lot of companies colluded because they do have the data so they do have all the data in the back end we might not see the data but they have the data where they can uh, look at the data and and uh, uh, confirm overlapping registrations they can confirm the kind of relationship these companies are having and so on and that is the announcement that uscis has given they said they are going to recommend criminal prosecution so they are not going to criminally prosecute anybody but they are recommending the right agencies the right agencies to get involved to criminally prosecute any anybody that they suspect has committed fraud and i think that has definitely contributed because people are relooking their data what they have done what they have filed and uh, people i think at least uh, the people who are going through and listening to their right advice are stopping their filings and that has definitely i think has contributed to the less number of filings that we are seeing compared to the prior years there is a lot of confusion going around uh, there are a lot of rumors uh, but however i think uh, it's a good thing that people revisit their filings the registration filings if they have done any uh, register the companies have done any registrations in collusion with other companies definitely it's a good idea to take a step back and uh, not commit further perjury further fraud by filing those registrations yes and also mr parvathini are you seeing uh, anything like you know let's say a company has been involved in multiple registrations or collusions are these companies getting any notices uh, by the government or the uscis for the amount of fraud that they've done sure so Uh, so right now uscis is uh, talking about two things 2023 cap and 2024 cap so what has happened this march that is 2024 cap and uh, the registrations last year are uh, 2023 cap so we have been seeing notices notice of intent to deny or notice of intent to revoke talking specifically about multiple registrations for at least last 7 months we have been seeing notices since october and we have been warning multiple companies because we are seeing these notices where uscis is pointing out various things uscis has the data they know the overlapping registrations so the minute they suspect any any collusion they are giving a notice and this is happening since last october where they are saying okay this company and this company you have so many overlapping registrations for example 100 overlapping registrations not only overlapping registrations but there are so many things in common Uh, such as uh, you're you're in the same city or you and this company and that company have some other relationship you have the same registered agent you have the same attorney so all these commonalities what they prove is they prove that your companies these companies knew each other okay so there is nothing wrong when two independent companies file but the question is okay you seem to be related but you have so many overlapping registrations and not only you have so many overlapping registrations but when we're looking at the filing data yeah for example the the employee gets picked up in these various companies but only one of them goes and files and they're seeing a kind of a pattern so when they see all this pattern and they see a lot of uh, commonalities same city or uh, same attorneys same registered agents what they feel is they feel that these companies knew each other and they worked in collaboration with each other which is absolutely 
a good argument from USCIS's perspective. So what they do is they issue this notice and they want a reply back. Okay, because maybe they have bona fide and independent jobs. They don't know. And this notice is an opportunity for the companies to provide what has happened. Uh, did, do you really have a bona fide job offer for uh, every filing? Did you collude with these other companies? So what that basically means is that USCIS will still give an opportunity in terms of a notice of intent to revoke or a notice of intent to deny. And this is happening since at least last October. Uh, and I think what has happened is a lot of people did not pay attention or maybe they just ignored it. And uh, it got repeated this March, which is why this April, USCIS came out with their announcement and they gave more statistics. They said, look, this year, so many, we are seeing so many multiple registrations. Last year, we are seeing, we are seeing so many multiple registrations. And uh, in our law firm, we have seen notices at least since last October. Uh, but for the 2024 cap, I have not seen any notices yet. But for 2023 cap, yes, we have definitely seen notices. And uh, what we are advising is if any uh, wrongdoing has happened, at least make sure you at least withdraw those cases where you have done multiple registration, where you have collusion. And for any cases that are not filed, if you have multiple registration issue where you you have colluded with somebody, do not file those cases. Okay, At least by not colluding further, at least you're not committing further uh, mistake and uh, trying to get a benefit for which you're not qualified in the first place. So, Mr. Paritnini, my next question to you was, do you think there will be a second lottery uh, this year? Uh, because, you know, there has been uh, so many changes and there's actually been one of, you know, a, a very big change, which was multiple registration fraud after so many years in the USCIS. Do you still think that there is scope for second lottery? So last year, we did not have a second lottery. Uh, but this year, I think uh, looking at the filings that happened last year, last year, there was a severe labor shortage. We did not see layoffs last year. And this year, I think we are seeing a slowness. We are seeing a lot of uh, tech layoffs. We're also having this uh, confusion over multiple registrations because apparently there have been a lot of multiple registrations this year. And uh, right now, based, uh, because of the USCIS warning, at least uh, a lot of people, at least some of the people seem to be listening to the right advice and not going ahead with the filings. So I think in terms of uh, the number of filings that USCIS will get, it will be definitely be less than last year. So not everybody that got selected in the lottery are going to do the filings. The companies, some of the companies will definitely take a step back. And we do have 85,000 quota to fill. And looking at the, 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 the way the filings are going on, at least looking at the data we have on our side, uh, because we're comparing it with the data we had last year, I definitely think that there is a good chance for a second lottery. However, the question is, uh, if there is a second lottery, when will we get a confirmation? So June 30th is the last day for the filings. And what that means is USCIS will not take any decision until June 30th. So they are definitely going to wait until June 30th. And after June 30th, they're going to give some time because they need all the cases that they receive. They need to be input. Uh, they need to be uh, receipted. The receipts have to be generated. They have to look at all that stuff. So that is going to take a couple of weeks, probably two, three weeks. So my guess is uh, probably uh, middle, middle of July, end of July, or probably first week of July. Uh, we can definitely expect another announcement from USCIS. And that is when I think uh, we will we will get a confirmation on the lottery. And what that means is at least definitely by first few weeks of August, we will definitely uh, get some confirmed news. And the USS will not take very long, but again, they need some time. They need some time after the deadline is over to do their analysis. So my guess is definitely we can expect a second lottery this year based on what I'm seeing so far. Yes. And also, Mr. Paratini, will the USCIS investigate <clears throat> the cases where they have not filed for the H-1B uh, cases but have been registered in the lottery? Uh, sure. Uh, so that's another concern a lot of people are having. So a lot of people have apparently done a lot of registrations, uh, a lot of registrations. And now they are not doing any filings at all. So you, so you, So when the filings were done, Every company that has done this registration in March, they have attested to USCIS that they do have a bona fide opportunity, bona fide requirement for a job. 
and also that they're not colluding with anybody to increase their chances in the lottery. So there are pretty much two main things happening at the time of registration. One, an attestation by the employer that they do have a bona fide job offer. And number two, that they are not colluding with anybody. So if a company has done a lot of registrations and they're not doing any filings, any H&B filings, uh, maybe they have a genuine reason why they are not doing any filings or maybe not. And USCIS has every right to inquire and find out what has happened because they want to make sure the lottery process is, is a smooth process. They want to make sure nobody is misusing that whole uh, lottery process. And what that means is they want to make sure that people are not filing frivolous registrations. They want to make sure people are not just uh, misusing this whole lottery system. So if one has done a lot of registrations with no intent to file the H-1Bs, or they do not have valid and legitimate reasons on why they are not filing the H-1s, they can probably expect some questions from USCIS. And that is why what we do is we recommend all our clients who are not filing, but have done the registration. Document your reasons. Why did you do the registrations in the month of March? And do you have any legitimate reasons on why you're not doing the filings? Maybe the, the company has some legitimate reasons. Maybe they lost a huge big project, or maybe something else happened. Maybe the employee... Uh, stated that they have other uh, job offers. Maybe something, they, they do have a genuine, because a lot of times people might have a genuine reason. So the recommendation we give is, yes, you are always answerable to USCIS in case they want to inquire on what has happened. Uh, but again, legally, you might have some valid reasons. So do document those reasons. So in case tomorrow USCIS or somebody else, some government officer steps into your office, you do have valid reasons on why you have not done the filing the actual H&B filing, even though you have done the registration in the month of March. Yes. And also, Mr. Parvatnani, are you seeing a lot of revocations based on the multiple registration? And what happens uh, to the revoked H-1B uh, visas? Uh, will they be added to the next year cap numerical limit? So, so we have seen uh, at least a few companies getting notice of intent to revoke or uh, notice of intent to deny. Uh, and again, the ones, the notices we have seen are all for uh, the 2023 cap cases, the cases that were filed last year. And some companies, because just because USCIS has sent a notice doesn't mean that they're right. A notice of intent to revoke or notice of intent to deny means USCIS is giving somebody an opportunity to rebut their statements. So some companies, sometimes uh, they do have valid reasons because uh, just because there's a multiple registration does not mean somebody has polluted. So we are seeing some clients where they have solid reasons that they have not colluded. So some companies, they're answering the notices. So if they get a notice, they're answering back with evidence that there is no collusion. And for those companies where there is clear, clear collusion, we recommend a withdrawal. And what that means is if somebody gets a revocation notice and the company is not able to explain to USCI, not able to counter through proof, through evidence that there is no collusion, what we recommend is we recommend a withdrawal because we don't want the company to go and make any further fraudulent statements to USCIS. You, that is, any false statements to USCIS is committing perjury. So those companies, in case they have withdrawn, the recommendation for the employee, the employees are not going to have a permanent bar or a permanent ban in US. No. However, what the employees should do is they should come through the lottery once again, clean through the lottery. The H1, if a company has got an approval through collusion or uh, through a multiple registration issue through collusion, as long as that case is withdrawn, go ahead and go through the lottery cleanly through another bona fide company that has a bona fide job offer, their H1B can still be approved. Okay, so just because somebody has got a notice does not mean there is a permanent ba ban on somebody. However, if some, if some employee misrepresents to USCIS, they could have a ban. So as long as the case gets withdrawn, they don't make any false statements to USCIS. They go cleanly through the process again, making sure there is no issue, clean process through a, a company that has no bona fide job offer issue or no multiple registration issue. The employees should be able to get back into status. Yes. And also what kind of steps do you think the USCIS uh, will be taking for the future H-1B filing? So I think USCIS, I think, will definitely do something. Definitely the process we currently have is not working. And I, I think uh, in the legal field, I think everybody, I think, 
think about the two main things. One, the fees. The ten dollar fees, I think, is giving an opportunity for a lot of companies to exploit the the lottery. Ten dollars is, I think, that is, I think, a big factor. USCIS has already talked about increasing the fees drastically. We are talking about uh, the fee increase as much as twenty uh, times. So I think that is one step which I think would at least be a start to ensure that not, I mean, not many people do frivolous registration. Ten dollar, I think, it gives a lot of people. Uh, I mean, no economic. Uh, uh hurt and what that means is people have definitely used the ten dollar fee to misuse the system number one number two the current registration process does not ask the company a lot of information it mainly asks about only the basic the biographical information in the passport and i think uh, there is a uniform universal consensus that if uscis asks for more information such as what exactly is the job offer what is the title what is the salary maybe something more than what they're currently doing It will help deter fraud. It will help pre- prevent fraud. So my guess is uh, definitely USCIS has data from the last couple of years. They are seeing this issue. They are recognizing this issue. And for people who are in this industry for a long time, uh, and that includes H-1B employees who want to stay in this country and work for a long time, want to contribute to the economy, the employers who want to employ these employees and um, uh, make a profit, and at the same time contribute to the taxes of the country. and all the professionals who are working in this industry all of us want a clean system we don't want a system that is easy to exploit so definitely i think uscis has recognized that we do want uscis to take uh, steps to better this process there is this process is definitely not working and uscis i think has recognized that when they issued the statement last month talking about the fraud and i think some of the steps that they've already they're already considering such as fee increase i i think are steps in the right direction and we hope that the next year's lottery process will incorporate a few of the changes uh, making changes is not easy for the government they need they they need to follow a process and what that means is uh, we cannot just blame them because they are required to follow the process but i think between now and next march there is a lot of time and we do hope that the current lottery process is going to be refined is going to be changed where the companies are not exploiting and it is going to help the companies it is going to help the employees who want to work in the system for a long time yes and also are you seeing any uh, approvals for the cases filed recently after being selected for the h1b lottery uh, so we have uh, filed a lot of cases because uh, it's again very close to the deadline and uscis is uh, allowing filing since april so we are seeing a lot of approvals we are seeing a few rfps and most of the rfps are for the standard issues that are raised for h1bs so we are seeing approvals and uh, people are getting approvals and, and uh, people are getting rfps minor rfps and that being said people do have to rush because june 30th is the deadline and for all the cases where there is a bona fide job offer and the employee is qualified people should wrap up their filings because after june 30th people will not be able to file even if they want to and uh, what that means is in terms of the rules the rules are still same as last year uscis is still following the regulations uh, we are not seeing any surprises in terms of any rule changes rules are still same as last year approvals are still same as last year even the rfps are still same as last year at this point of time <clears throat> yes and also what are some of the rfps that the employees should be expecting uh, once the h1b is filed so in terms of the rfps again uh, the h1b process most of the rfps are very standard and uh, they talk about few main things one is the employee qualified for the job that's a very common rfp beneficiary qualification it's a very standard rfp and it basically asks whether the employee is qualified and asks us to prove that the employee is qualified and to give an example say if somebody has uh, a degree from india or say a degree in mechanical engineering and they're getting filed for a computer science job a software developer job so this rfe basically all it says is hey you we don't think you have a right degree uh, can you explain why you are qualified and show through evidence that you're qualified this again is not a very tough rfe because most of the time 99% of the time employers do not hire anybody if they're not qualified because they they do have to pay a, a huge salary so it's an rfe that gets raised very often the beneficiary qualifications but again there are ways to prove it 
and that can be proved and another uh, very common rfa is regarding the job itself uh, does this job qualify for h1b so under h1b only certain occupations can be filed and that occupation is supposed to be a specialty occupation job and specialty occupation means the job is a complex job not everybody can do the job but they need specialized training and that specialized training is at least a bachelor's degree at least a bachelor's degree in a very specialized field so this rfe basically says hey we think the employee is qualified but prove that your job is really very specialized and complex that it qualifies to be a specialty occupation job that's another rfe we get uh, again not very common but it it does happen time to time and another most common rfe that we get around this time is the maintenance of status many of the employees are already in us in f1 status or some other status so what uscis requires is any time they apply for h1b with change of status we do have to prove that they are in the country legally so it is uscis's way of asking us for more evidence to prove that yes they are in the country legally and also ever since they have been in the country legally they are doing the right things which is maintaining their status if somebody is in us on f1 they're going to college they're not uh, skipping classes they're not failing classes and so on so high level these are the three kind of main rfes that people can expect for uh, the cap h1b cases yes i think we can definitely continue with more in the next episode uh, thank you mr parvat neni for uh, you know joining our show thank you for the viewers also for tuning in you're watching sakshi tv with me shivani raj thank you